In this video, I'll be covering the DC Black Label hardcover release of Harleen. What is going on? I hope everybody is doing well and settled into the new year. For my first video of 2020, I thought I would bring emphasis to what in my opinion would be one of the top comic releases to come out of the DC Black Label imprint. Harleen, a three issue mini series that kicked off in late September last year was entirely written, illustrated, inked and coloured by Stepan Shayic. Having been only familiar with his short stint on Aquaman and other variant covers he did, I was unclear what I was in for, for as he would be taking on all aspects of this book. Even though I loved Harley in titles such as Heroes in Crisis, I haven't really enjoyed the solo Harley Quinn story as much as the Harley 3 issue miniseries. I'm sure I'm not alone here that I find it hard to relate to the recent iterations of Harley because quite a few of the recent writers on a solo book seem to sacrifice any grounding of the character in favour of the Looney Tunes over the top fun comedy. Don't get me wrong, there's always a time when all you want to do is read a fun book but as of late I have been gravitating to a more serious tone in the titles I have been reading week to week. For those who didn't pick up the three issue mini series, I promise not to give too much away but be warned I'll be diving into a bit of spoiler territory just enough to whet your appetite. If anybody is confused what this three issue mini series is all about, it is essentially an extremely engaging take on Harley Quinn's origin and building upon what Paul Dini created in Mad Love. In 1994, Mad Love won an award and is highly regarded across critics and readers alike. As many bad fans know, this was turned into an episode of the animated series. So for Shage to take this all on and excel as a writer and artist was an incredible feat. As a reader, you'll definitely see how Shage's characterization of Harley stands out to everything you have read with her in the past. Even though this is a prequel of sorts, his version has so much depth. Shage achieves this from the dream sequences that demonstrates her descent into madness to her real day-to-day -day stresses dealing with past mistakes and the struggles with the rogues gallery in Arkham. Speaking of the rogues gallery, even though the Joker is one of the central characters in the book that keeps the reader guessing whether he is truly in love with Harleen or whether he's manipulating her, the other Batman rogues gets a lot of panel time and one even gets the retelling of his origin which causes a chain reaction as the story unfolds, while we also get to see the beginnings of a friendship with Poison Ivy. Overall, whether you are reading this for the very first time or rereading it because you double dip, I'm pretty sure that you'll appreciate the complex characters, the stunning artwork and the very grounded series and somewhat depressing lifestyle Gothamites live day to day. This is definitely a mandatory must read. Now diving into the hardcover release, we start off with the dimensions as we are sort of still are in the early phases of DC's Prestige Plus format. For those who are not familiar, Prestige Plus is the new name for the format where it is magazine size like dimensions. These dimensions is 8.5 inches wide by 10.875 inches tall when released as a floppy. The hardcover editions of these books are just slightly wider and taller than its floppy counterpart, much like standard hardcover trim sizes to its modern size floppies. You can see this here with comparing the Harleen floppies to the hardcover as well as Batman Dam to its hardcover. The DC Black Label floppies that have been released in the new Prestige Plus format was kickstarted with Batman Dam, then came a slew of releases like Superman Year One, Joker Killer Smile, Joker Harley Criminal Sanity, The Question, and of course Harleen. But under the DC Black Label imprint, there were also prestige releases like Batman Last Night on Earth and Batman White Knight that are in the original standard comic book trim size that is square bound and have cardstock covers. I was actually quite disappointed that Snyder, Coppola and Murphy didn't adopt the Prestige Plus format as their storytelling would have benefited the larger format. Moving on to the dust jacket, the DC design team outdid themselves again and went the extra mile to include a stunning acetate design that not only enhanced enhances the book visually but also adds depth to Harleen where when you take the dust jacket off it depicts Harleen's last moments before she descends into madness. 
The upper layer was from the main cover of book 1 while the layer underneath was from the last page of book 3. Basically the very first and last pieces of Shaiichi's art is front and center. This piece of art just gives us so many degrees of motions that's going through Harleen. As we move to the spine of the acetate dust jacket we get a very clean blood red tone that ties in with her colors nicely. Now spinning to the back we get a lot of transparency to reveal the cover underneath where the Joker is supposedly manipulating Harleen and their loving embrace from book 2 as well as the synopsis. And lastly, the dust jacket sleeves continues the blood red tone where it draws quotes from the book as well as Stepan Shaich's biographical info. Opening the book we get the iconic black, red and white Harley diamonds with key expressive panels of the book spread throughout. Usually when you open a collected edition this is just a solid colour so right off the bat the collected edition designer Megan Bellison went the extra mile. As we flip through the next pages, we get more of the clean design until we hit the double page main creator credits with Shaiichi's memorable Psycho Harley from book 2. Flipping over we get the entire editorial collected edition and design team credits, if it wasn't for each of them we wouldn't be getting such an A plus release. Then comes the 3 issue mini series where we get the main cover and a clear indication on what book you are reading. Traversing through the book towards the extras, I do not want to spoil anything major but I definitely want to show some epic key panels and pages that Shage produced. The first one I want to highlight would be the double page spread with Batman swinging into a fight with the Joker. This double page spread is something that's perfectly executed and the Prestige Plus format really benefits from this. The second one I want to highlight is Harleen's first day on the job walking into Arkham is definitely a departure to the gloomy asylum that we'll come to know. It depicts a sense of hope but we all know how it will all end. And lastly, as we approach the end, we cannot go without mentioning Shaiichi's absolutely mind blowing depiction of Poison Ivy in her full glory. Everything about this page is just perfect. I understand Shaiichi has been pitching for an Isley DC Black Label book and fingers crossed that this gets green lit very soon. Now let's move on to the extras. Given the limited series is only 3 issues, it's expected to be pretty light. We get the usual variant cover gallery, but also what we never have seen before would be the unused cover concept. The meat of the extras though would be the graphic timeline of the creation of this 3 issue limited series all the way back from 2015 to current day. There are many awesome draft concept pieces here. The last few pages in the extra section we get more of his creative process where he does not implement draft scripts but rather goes for outline which then gets translated to thumbnail layouts. And then we close out the book with Shage's biography. Now finally moving on to the build of the book, I want to be completely upfront and say there is absolutely no complaints at all. The sewn binding is spot on as you can see on this double page spread and there is no gutter loss at all. You can also see that the eye completely opens up as I traverse through the book. Something tells me that DC should be sticking with this printing company from now on. The paper stock is on point and there are no signs of the dreaded wrinkles and the cover shows no warping at all. I know in the comments below you'll be asking for the chipped acetate on a dust jacket in the top right hand corner but that was definitely not the fault of the printing company for a change but rather the shipping practices on how the book arrived. The evidence is right here that when I take off the dust jacket the corner got dinged as well. This is more of a reason to get into your local comic book store in person to inspect the book yourself before purchasing. Or if you are purchasing this online, as much as Amazon is known for its extremely careless shipping practices, you can always exchange it as many times as you need to until you get a fresh minting copy. If you decide to purchase this book from Amazon, I have put a link in the description below. And now for my final thoughts, I can definitely say there is little more that I can add to what I just went over. The absolutely stunning multi-layered character complexity not only with Harleen but also with the supporting cast is something that no other Harley Quinn book that I can think of comes close. Previous books just scratches the surface but Shades just brings a whole another level in his storytelling. Like I mentioned earlier, I absolutely want more of his works under the DC Black Label banner so let's hope that Poison Ivy Pitch gets great. Greenlit. Lastly, i like to say that this video wouldn't be possible if Mega did not only produce such a stellar hardcover for Shaiichi's masterpiece but also for sending a copy so I can share this with you all on release week. So a major major thanks to Megan for making this happen and also thank you all for continuing to support not only this channel but on Instagram and Twitter as well. The DMs and positive feedback I get daily is much appreciated and I'm really humbled that you continue to rock with me ever since I launched the channel. 
The online comic community is just plain awesome, especially on Instagram. So if you're only on YouTube exclusively, I think you'll be blown away with what the IG comic community will offer you. This is Alex and I'll catch you in the next video.